Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make one of the dishes that our family has absolutely loved for more than 20 years. I'm going to make this dish for you and show you how to make it. And as I make it, I'm going to tell you the story about how it came to be. Stay tuned. Okay, what you need to have to put this together and I guess I haven't told you the name of it yet. It's onion casserole. And I know at first you're thinking, onion casserole? Now wait a minute, that doesn't sound so good. Well, I gotta tell you, it is wonderful. And all you need to have for this onion casserole is a casserole dish, uh, probably about as big a casserole dish as you can find. And you're gonna need six or so onions. You're going to use them all. You're also going to need a can of this Campbell's cream of chicken soup or you can get some other brand of cream of chicken soup if you like. You're going to need a bunch of Swiss cheese slices. You're going to need two sticks of butter. You're going to need a couple of extra bowls, cutting board, knife, and a loaf of sliced French bread. I'll tell you more about the bread. It could even be Italian bread when we get to that. All right, let's get going. I'm going to go ahead and get started slicing these onions now. And if you'll excuse me for a few minutes, I may have to tear up while I'm doing this. All right, I'm going to start slicing. I like to put a plastic bag inside a bowl so when I have trash, I can just put it right there and it's already in a plastic bag. You know, this is my very favorite chopping knife, especially for things like onions. I don't know why I didn't start with this to begin with. I should have. But the reason I like that knife is because it's, I keep it really sharp. It's got a nice big blade on it. But watch this. After you cut something and you chop it up into pieces, You can just use it to scoop. And it's a lot better than trying to scoop with one of these, or worse yet, one of these. Here we go. Wow, man, am I glad that's done. As you have seen, the very first step is to chop the onions. And you chop probably more than you think you need. They will cook down. The next step is to saute the onions. We saute them in, I saute them in butter. You can use whatever you like, but I like to use a whole stick of butter. And I saute them until they just start to caramelize. And then they're done and ready for the casserole. But then we're ready for step three. Here we go. I'm going to turn this burner on to medium high heat. This is the left burner, this is the right burner. And I'm going to wait until the butter melts and then I'm going to add in the onions. Okay, the butter is almost melted. I think that's good enough. I'm adding in the onions. Woo, man, look at all those onions. I wonder if I should have gotten a bigger frying pan. Now I'm going to leave the burner on kind of high right now because both the butter and the onions have water in them. And as long as there's water in them, the temperature will not go above 212 degrees. 
and it will stay that way until you cook all the water off. Once the water starts to pretty much cook off, that's when you start being able to burn some of this food. So I'm not really too worried about burning it yet because there's still a lot of water in there and that's got to cook down and I'm going to have most of it cook out before we're done. Now while this is cooking down, I'm going to take this other stick of butter in a smaller bowl and I am going to nuke it for probably 30 seconds because that ought to be just about enough to melt it without cooking it. And we're going to need some melted butter in step number five. Here we go. That could use a little bit more nuking, but I'm going to let it sit for a minute. It might melt itself some more. We can see these onions are starting to get a little bit translucent. That means they're losing some of the water. But we definitely want to cook them some more than this. We do not want crunchy onions in our onion casserole. Now let me tell you, while we're waiting for this, the story of how this came to be. It had to be in about 19, between 1988 and 1990. My wife and I were living in Montgomery, Alabama, and we went to go visit my dad who lived in a little town just outside of Orlando at that time. And on the way down there, our route took us to a little town right on the border of Alabama and Florida called Cottondale. Now I don't know if you've ever been through Cottondale before, but Cottondale has a lot of fresh vegetable and fruit stands. Well, this was early fall, so a lot of the fruits were past season, but I wanted to stop just for a break and to see what they had and maybe to pick up something to take to my dad as a gift. And we came across this stand and they had Vidalia onions. Have you ever had a Vidalia onion? If you haven't, you need to try one. Well, Vidalia onions are one of Georgia's best kept secrets. Actually, they're not so well kept secret anymore. They're very sweet and they're very good. So I bought a bag of Vidalia onions to take my dad, about a 10 pound bag. And my wife said to me, she's really, are you kidding? Onions? You're taking onions as a gift? I said, I don't know, it just, it just feels right. It feels like something that they might appreciate. And she looked at me with all kinds of doubt in her eyes and one of those looks that says, well, okay, if you say so, I'm not gonna argue with you, but we'll just wait and see. So we did, we waited and we saw and we got there. And my dad had uh, a friend, Pam Michaels, who was with him at the time and we came in and we brought said, we brought your present and I gave her these bag of Vidalia onions and she said oh boy Vidalia onions I have this recipe I've been just dying to try and she dashed to the kitchen with this bag of Vidalia onions and she made this onion casserole and it was so good that we got the recipe from her and we have been making it ever since now, when you try this recipe, and you should try this recipe, you need to come back here and in the comment section down below, let us know how you like it. If you didn't like it, that's okay. It's not for everybody, but if you do like it, you need to come back here and rave about it. That's what I would do. Anyway, that's what the story is about this onion casserole. And now you know. These onions look like they're getting even more translucent. It won't be long now before they start to just begin to caramelize and then they will be ready for the next step. What do you think? Does that need one more round of nuking? Maybe 10 seconds, okay? Let's do 10 seconds and see what happens. Time cook, one, zero, start. Now as 
I stir up these onions, I notice there's about one or two little shreds of the onion paper, the onion peel, that I neglected to get off the outside of the onion. And I'm sorry about that, but if somebody gets that in their serving, uh, I think I'm just gonna shrug and say, oh, I'm sorry. Next time, you can cut the onions. And they won't complain then again the next time. That's good, that's all melted. It's getting there. I can also feel the texture of the onions through the spoon into my hand. I can feel that they're not as crispy as they used to be, but I don't want them to be crispy at all, and I can still feel some crispiness in them. So I'm gonna go ahead and cook them a little bit more. Okay, these are starting to look a lot better now. There's no crunchiness in them at all. I can feel it's nice and soft through the spoon. I'm not gonna stick my hand there. You can see with all the steam coming off, that means the temperature in these onions has reached 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees centigrade. The water is boiling off. You can also see that the onions have cooked down a little bit, matter of fact, quite a bit since they started off. I'm gonna grab a screenshot frame from earlier in the video and I'm going to put it on here so you can compare the raw onions with the cooked onions. Here's the raw onions and here's the cooked onions. Quite a difference, isn't it? All right, we're just about ready for step number three. Step number one was chop the onions. Step number two was saute the onions. Step number three is add the cream of chicken soup and we're going to do that right now. I always like to have a little towel available whenever I have something to set down that might be just a little bit messy so I don't get that mess on my counter. All right, we're not going to dilute it. It's condensed cream of chicken soup. And if you go in a grocery store and you can't find it, look down at the bottom. For some reason, grocery stores, because this is very popular and everybody wants it, they put it down where it's hard to find. So you have to go looking through all the other stuff they have for sale and they hope that you'll see something. Oh, I wanted that too and buy that. Well, I don't know that for a fact, but that's just what I'm speculating. And we're just gonna make sure this is all mixed in thoroughly. And when this is all mixed in thoroughly, we're gonna go put it into the casserole dish. Now the original instructions call for adding milk to this, but we have found over the years we've been making it that having a thicker onion base to the casserole is actually quite a bit better. It tastes better, it serves better, and it, it is better. Now, as you can see, this cream of chicken soup is getting thoroughly mixed in with the onions. It's already looking good, isn't it? Now, the main reason for cooking the onions, besides getting them soft, is that when you cook them, that sharp bite that you taste if you eat a raw onion gets cooked out of it and it brings out the sugars and it makes the onions sweeter, especially if you have Idalia onions. And when the sugars start coming out, the sugars, they start cooking and toasting and they start turning a light brown and that's when you have your onions being caramelized. So when I said we lightly caramelize the onions, what that means is we cook them until they go through the yellow phase, from white to yellow, and they very, slightly start getting into brown. And then you have caramelized onions. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think that'll do it. Let's go put it in the casserole dish. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> okay, here we are. We're gonna put all these onions right into the bottom of the casserole dish. Ooh-wee. Now for those of you who want to make this onion casserole, but you don't want to chop the onions, you just might be able to find somebody else willing to chop the onions if you make the rest of the casserole. 
You may have to do it the first time and then they will know how good that casserole is. And next time they'll say, ooh, 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 I'll chop the onions, you make the casserole. So that should be fine. And I pretty much always try to rinse. Actually, I'd like to wash it, but right now I'm in the middle of making something else. But at least rinse all your dishes as soon as you're done using them. Makes them so much easier to wash. And if you can wash them at this time, then that takes a load off of your workload later on. Okay, the next step is to layer Swiss cheese on top of the hot onions. Sometimes I wonder if the people in charge of making packages ever try to open them themselves. Somehow, I doubt it. This is grocery store brand Swiss cheese slices. I love Swiss cheese. It melts so nicely. And yes, there will be some overlap on these slices, and oh well, I guess we'll just have to put up with that, won't we? I want to make sure we have enough. Looks like there may not be enough to go down the middle. But if there's not, then we'll just have to see what we can do about that. Three, and I'm going to fold this one in half, and people who get there onion casserole from out of the middle may wind up having a little bit less Swiss cheese than the others, but oh well. The good thing about most recipes is that you can vary the ingredients and the quantities of the ingredients and it'll still work out for the most part. Okay, here we have the sliced bread. Now, I have discovered in past servings of this bread, number one, sourdough bread is always the best. If you can get sliced sourdough and put this on there, then you will have the best bread ever. Next thing is, these bread slices, they're too big. When you serve it up and you serve a serving to somebody and they won't go to take a bite, the bread's going to be toasted on top and it just won't be quite as edible as if the slices were smaller. So, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut it at least in half. And I think that'll probably do it for now. I don't know if that's going to be enough. If it is, great. If it's not, I'll cut some more. And all you do is take this other stick of butter you melted and you dunk the bread in it and you put it butter side up on the casserole. There it is, and that's really all there is to it. Meantime, you should have your oven preheating to 350 degrees. If you've ever put together a mosaic puzzle, you'll have fun putting the bread on top of your onion casserole. What we have here now is the completed onion casserole ready to bake. The only thing left to do is to put it in the oven at 350 degrees for about a half an hour until the bread on the top is toasty brown. And I got to tell you, you're going to love this. Here we go. And let's put it into the oven. Cooking time timer, there we go. Timer, minutes, five to six, seven to eight, nine, 30. I'm gonna check the time right now though, just to be sure that I don't overcook it and I'll know when to come back and check it. 
Oh, there's the timer alert. Let's see what it says here. That is not quite done. I'm going to turn off the timer, kitchen timer off, and I'm going to give it about another 10 minutes because what we really want here is for these little pieces of bread on the top to be toasty brown. And as you can see, they're just brown around the edges, so they're not ready yet. We're going to give it some more time. Okay, I think it's time. Let's take a look. Ooh, look at that. It's kind of juicy, but it will firm up after it sits for about 10 minutes. And here we have it, onion casserole. It is going to be yummy. Now it's going to have to sit here for 10 or 15 minutes because as you can see it's still a little bit juicy and we don't want it quite that juicy. You'll remember I did not add any milk to the condensed soup that's in there and it's still this juicy. Try this recipe and then after you try it come back to this video give us that thumbs up and you'll let me and you'll let the YouTube robots know that you thought this was a great video. The best thing you could do then is share this video with other people that you think might enjoy this onion casserole recipe. Yum, yum. The next thing you need to do, of course, leave us a comment in the comment section down below about what it is that you liked about this casserole and if you tried any variations on it, what you did and how it turned out for you. And finally, don't forget, if you're already a subscriber, thank you. I appreciate every single one of you. And if you're not, why not go ahead right now and click that subscribe button and then the bell icon and YouTube will let you know every time we post another great tutorial right here on David's Tutorials. Take care everybody and have a wonderful day.